try my different <laughs> A while back, me and some friends decided to head on a little day trip down to the salty islands just off the coast of Wexford to go and see the puffins during nesting season. And to hang out with each other, I suppose. Getting to the islands themselves, though, is a whole thing. First, you have to get a boat from Kylemore Quay, and then you have to get on a little rubber dinghy boat that they then use to bring you to the island itself because the bigger boat can't get close enough. So you have to get into this dinghy boat and then get off it onto a little tiny beach, all the while trying not to fall into the Irish Sea and destroy all your camera gear. Now, because I was planning to photograph wildlife, I decided to bring my thickest lens, the 200 to 500 f5.6 E lens, this lens is thick with two C's. I also brought my D780 as a backup digital camera and my friend's F100 that I borrowed. Now you might ask yourself, why didn't I just bring the F6? Well, that is because at the time, my F6 was currently on a month holiday in the Nikon Well Spa in Tokyo. This also means that my F6 has been to Japan for a month before I was able to get there and I am still bitter about it. Now I wasn't the only guy heading out there with a camera because every other person on the boats, apart from our group, had massive digital cameras and big fancy lenses. This meant that I was outnumbered quite a bit by the digital people, so to disguise myself I made sure to chimp and take a look at the back of my camera after every shot, and any time I was shooting I made sure to make a burst shutter sound as loud as I could to disguise the fact I was only shooting one or two frames at a time. So to start the day, I loaded up some lightly expired Velvia 100 that I've actually had frozen since it was fresh. But I did bring some Portra 800 and some Superior Premium 400 just in case the weather was kind of crap. But it turns out it was a lovely bright sunny day. So shooting at 100 ISO was really doable, particularly with the 200 to 500 amazing VR. But it probably wasn't even needed because I was getting 1 500th at f5.6 on that lens. When it comes to actually shooting, there isn't much to talk about because it's an autofocus SLR, you know, lens, VR, it's pretty much automatic. I just had to point the camera and shoot. And shooting the birds was actually super fun because you could get quite close to them and get some really nice up close shots. And I was extremely happy with all the photos I took, particularly any of the ones where the birds were sitting among the little flowers and the grass to add some very nice color. And I thought they actually turned out great. In particular, the Velvia rendered the colors really nicely and is super happy with how they turned out. So later on, we decided to stop and have some lunch. And while I was having a lovely cup of tea and with a ham and cheese sambo, I decided to load up some ectochrome into the F100. And it was at this point I ran into quite a serious problem because somehow while I was loading the film, I managed to break the AI tab off my friend's F100. Now I'm going to assume that while I was mounting the 200 to 500, I hit it or maybe the weather seal gasket got caught on the little tab and it just snapped clean off. Now breaking a camera sucks ass. We're all going to break a camera at some point. 
But what made this a thousand times worse is that it wasn't my camera, it was my friend's camera and I had just broken the AI tab off it. So I was going to either have to replace or repair this somehow, but when you're out on the Salty Islands, there's nothing you can do about it. So I just left it be and I decided to deal with it when I got back home. However, I was able to finish shooting the roll because on the F100, if you mount a G lens or an E lens, you can still use the camera and it will still expose correctly because it doesn't need to use the AI tab. So I was able to finish my roll of Ektachrome, but I was going to have to deal with this serious issue very soon. Now a few hours later we were waiting for our boat to come back and pick us up to bring us home. A little water doggo decided to come up to the beach and say hello and I decided to burn off the last of my ectochrome on him. And that's pretty much the trip to the Salty Islands. It was a lot of fun, I was super happy with the photos I took, I was very glad I chose to shoot Velvia and ectochrome because slide film just rendered the images absolutely beautifully and even compared to some of the digital shots i took during the day they turned out really really nicely as for the islands themselves they're super worth the visit during the puffin nesting season we were told by the people running the boats that after a few months the puffins just all disappear so you can only go see them during the nesting season around may so it's definitely well worth the trip if you get the chance however you do need to be prepared for the absolutely unbelievable stink of having thousands and thousands of birds in one location. After all that excitement and developing the film and scanning it in and processing it, I then had to face dealing with this F100 problem. So when it comes to breaking a camera like this, you're left with two options. One is just a straight up replacement and the second one is a repair. Now I decided to go down the repair route mostly because I actually asked around my local photography group and it turns out that there was a guy who had a completely broken F100 with a good AI tab, which is this camera right here. So I decided to attempt a repair. And the reason I attempted a repair was because the guy who can repair cameras in Dublin is always super busy, so I decided to do it myself. I've repaired lenses and stuff in the past. How hard could it be? But the other reason is because if I wasn't able to repair the camera, I'd just have to replace it anyway. But luckily when it comes to the F100, there are lots of cheap ones available on eBay that are missing the back door because the back doors do have a tendency to fail. So if I did fail to repair the camera or damage it further, I would be able to just buy one of these cameras missing the back door, swap over the back door and then return that to my friend. Obviously I told my friend that I did break it and I was gonna to attempt to repair and if it failed, I would replace it. I informed him straight away that I had broken the camera. And luckily, I was able to repair it by replacing the entire front face of the camera. And attached to this is the broken AI ring. The reason I didn't replace the AI ring on its own is because it's connected by a little Mickey spring and I have no desire to be dealing with one of those. So I just replaced the entire front face of the camera. The repair was a success. My friend got his camera back and I got some amazing pictures of puffins. And with that, that's the end of the video. So I'll see you next time. Oh, is it sex or marital speed?